everybody. This is Marie Soleil. I just finished one month bikepacking in Colombia and this is my bike setup. I'll walk you through the bike and the gear that I brought with me. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about some mistake that I've done with my setup and things that I would change if I was to do this trip again. So first, the bike um, is the Scalpel by Cannondale with the front suspension. Love the front suspension. I will definitely keep that with a flat bar. For the gear, I uh, kept the same setup that I had for the Tour Divide. So this was a 34 in the front, 1052 in the back. I definitely regretted going with a 34 in the front because I had way too much stuff and it was way too steep and I underestimated the altitude a little bit. So if I was to do it again, I would definitely go with something smaller like a 30. Unless, unless you go much lighter, unless you're really strong and unless you know that you're good with altitude. For the wheels, I'm riding the amazing Duke Racing Wheels, their mountain bike wheels made for the toughest mountain bike racing. I have a 28 width rim in the front and a 26 width in the back. Paired with the, this time I went with the Rene Hurst, um, with the Fleece Ridge 55 width tire. Great choice, it was perfect. If you haven't noticed, I'm a short woman, I'm 5'2". And this is important because a lot of the time what we see on the internet doesn't work on small bikes. So I'm riding a size small bike and it's really difficult. We have to deal with a lot of limitation in terms of clearance. The biggest change that I made from my setup on the Tour Divide was going from seat bag and handlebar bag to a rear rack and pannier. And this solved all of my issues of clearance here and there. And actually by removing my handlebar bag, I was able to lower my bar by like one inch, which helped me to get more strength. In the past I was like this, and now by removing this bag, I was able to go lower. And now I feel like stronger when I'm going down. And so for me, this was a big change. And in order to remove my handlebar bag, I needed to have more volume somewhere else. And so that's where the, the rack comes in. And so i um, really grateful for Tailfin support for helping me uh, getting set up with their, uh, with their system. So I have the fork suspension mount here that is made officially for suspension fork in order to mount Panny pair with their brand new fork pack which is really easy to remove. And I can also attach another bottle cage here. So you can either have it centered or you can have, you can mount two things. This system is like super solid. In the back, I have the Aero Pack. This is a 20 liter and it's attached to the carbon rack right here. And the carbon rack is attached to a special through axle that Telfin sent with it. Uh, for the for the cockpit, this is a burrito roll that I uh, this is my own little idea here that I installed um, horizontally so that I can access the food from in between my my handlebars. So this was like uh, my food bag. Love this little idea, and then I had this bungee to like stash a jacket or something. This is the, um, my, my GoPro mount here that rotates. This is the, some people were asking, this is the official uh, GoPro biking mount that you can find on GoPro website. And I attach it here in the middle, thanks to this bridge that I got on Amazon. And uh, this is the um, Synwave light dynamo powered uh, with my Sun 28 dynamo here. Um, I had initially this feedback was here, but I just loved how um, easier, like I just loved how much space I had when I'm climbing, standing. Maybe this guy will get, will end up here too, I don't know. But for now, this, <laughs> this ended up like just being perfect for me. This is the 1.5 liter, if I'm right, by Telfin. I thought it was a little big because of the short size of my bike. When I stand over the bike, I thought it was a little too long. So I think that's something that I would change. So this was like my electronic wallet gloves, electrolyte. Um, in the frame bag, I had toiletry, battery pack, my pump, suspension pump. We'll dig in the bag later. Um, 
in the back. This is the 20 liter Aero Pack. The only thing that I can say about this bag is that because of my short bike, again, the bag got a little bit under my seat. And so I thought it was a little hard to attach it here and with my dropper post, um, the strap that is supposed to be here sometimes would like slide under. And so if I would change one thing it would be to add like a, like a rubber strap. Um, otherwise that worked fine. Um, and so for that reason, I ended up using this bag for things that I don't use as often and also things that are maybe a bit heavier so that it doesn't mess with my balance when I'm when I'm riding. So for the rear pannier here I had my my tent and rain gear on the top. On the other side I had my sleeping bag and warm layer on the top which was really easy to access here. I would definitely keep that. And then in the front I had everything that is like food, stove, cookware in the front. Uh, that's it. So now the big thing that I would change if I was to do this trip again would be to not bring all of my camp gear. That's the that's the thing I regret the most, but I, I didn't know, that's okay. When I was reading about uh, bikepacking in Colombia, I was reading that it was difficult to find camping, but I thought I was gonna be determined enough to find camping, but no, a lot of it is private land. And so I was able to camp only twice in one month. And so that was a bit uh, disappointing, a bit surprising. And it's so easy to find lodging. There's hostel and hotel like everywhere. Every like village has some, every 25, 30 kilometer, you're gonna find lodging options that is so cheap. So it was definitely much easier. It's like if I knew I would not have bring all of my tent, sleeping bag, cookware, all that, um, that would have made my bike a lot lighter and maybe more enjoyable to ride. And another thing that I would change would be to not bring as many warm layers. I was surprised to see how warm Colombia was. Like I never, I never wore my gloves. I never wore my puffy jackets. It was, uh, I mean, you never know. I think it was good to have it. I would probably still bring it, but maybe not two pair of gloves or like, you know, maybe not the down pants, for example. So if you are going to go bikepacking in Colombia, don't bring your camp gear, don't bring too much warm stuff, but instead bring your clothes for when you're at the hostel and bring a smaller chain ring in the front. Don't bring all that stuff, way too much stuff. But if you are going to bring something, bring some telfin. I think I'm done. I'm gonna make a cut here. All right, uh, let's dig in the bag. So, what do we have here? This was my breakfast. I have my stove. I think it's the Whisper Light by MSR. Um, aluminum shield. On the other side, some chips, some tortilla. My um, my little one liter pot here. In here we have some gloves, wallet, electrolyte. This was my SRAM with an extra battery. Battery pack, AirPod, multi-tool with a knife, and some cables and Allen keys. In here, we have toiletry, sunscreen, <gasps> electrolyte and protein powder, a headlight, um, chain lube, I'm using the Makoff Hydro. I love this chain loop with a rag. I clean it every day. Suspension, pump, tire pump, and uh, this thing. Here I have my two liter bladder here with the B3 filter that can attached to the, this is the Hydro Pack, so they're compatible. Love this system. Some tablets, tube, rain jacket, all of my rain gear here that I've never used. I have never seen rain in one month in Colombia. And here I have my tan separately, so it's just, I have, my lovely seven mesh. All of the little accessories like gloves and like uh, arm warmers, vest, pants, and my sleeping bag that I've used once. 
And then um, in the back, puffy jacket, down pants, an extra pair of shorts. This was like my bag with my uh, like hotel, dry, like other extra dry clothes. City Summit, air mat, waterproof socks that I definitely never needed. Pillow, external disc for my cameras, my uh, toolkit, repair kit. And that's it, ta-da! If you have any questions about my setup or any items, if you have questions about writing in Colombia, feel free to ask me in the comments. I hope this was helpful and uh, happy writing.